Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of Amy Romeo Crafts. And today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this really pretty cardinal Christmas tree ornament using faux leather, heat transfer vinyl, and a Cricut. If you want to learn how to make this project, let's go ahead and get started. The SVG file for this project is available in my shop. It's part of my holiday faux leather crafting event where I'm sharing a brand new holiday SVG and video tutorial every day for 20 days. I'll leave a link on the screen for you so you can get the SVG or you can visit amyromeo.com slash holiday to see all of the event's designs. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make this project. I'll be using my Cricut Maker, but you could use the Maker 3, the Explore Air 2, the Explore 3, the Cricut Joy, or even the Cricut Joy Extra, because we'll be cutting our faux leather with the standard fine point blade that's included with all of those machines. So this project will have two layers. The bottom base layer will be faux leather, and the top layers will be cut from heat transfer vinyl. You could use permanent vinyl instead of heat transfer vinyl if you wanted to. You could also make this project with a base of cardstock instead of faux leather. So the faux leather that I'll be using is a printed faux leather. This comes in a sheet. This one has little snowflakes on it, and you can either have a daytime background or a nighttime background for your cardinal ornament. You could also use solid faux leathers if you'd like. Faux leather comes on sheets or in rolls, and so it's really up to you. I also have some white faux leather on hand too, and I think I'm going to use the print for the front of the ornament and then white for the back. So I have more printed faux leather to create more pretty ornaments without wasting it and using it on the back. To cut the faux leather, I'll be using my purple strong grip cutting mat, and I'll be using the green standard grip cutting mat for the heat transfer vinyl or permanent vinyl if that's what you're using. If you're using either of the Joy machines, you can use the green Joy size mats for cutting both materials. To press the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my Easy Press Mini on the low setting. You could also use a regular Easy Press set to about 265 degrees. I'll be using a heat pressing pad and a cover sheet to protect my surface. This is a Teflon sheet that I've trimmed down to size, but you could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. A few other tools that we'll be using, we'll be using some blue painter's tape to help us get good cuts with our faux leather. We'll be using a weeding tool, like a pin pen or a hook weeding tool. Some craft scissors, like these four inch curved scissors or embroidery scissors. This is great for trimming the edges of faux leather as needed. We'll be using some ribbon to tie up our ornament and we'll also be using some glue. I'll be using this Fabri-Tac, but you could use any good fabric glue or a craft glue like Barely Art Glue. And I have a trick that I'll show you at the end of the video when we're gluing to help you get a really nice flat and well sealed ornament. So let's hop into Design Space and we'll get our design cut out and then I'll show you how to put the ornament together. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG file is for this project. Click on Open and you'll see a preview of the SVG. Click on Upload, select it from your recent uploads row and click Add to Canvas. So here we see the shapes that we'll cut to create this ornament. The two dark blue layers will cut from the faux leather of your choice and after we press all of these heat transfer vinyl layers or if you're using permanent vinyl after you apply the vinyl layers, then we will glue the two faux leather shapes together to create a nice stiff ornament base so you can hang this on your tree. So all of these layers will be applied in a certain order and I'll have a layering guide for you which is a graphic inside the download folder that will show you which layer to apply in which order and I hope that's helpful to you. You can always come back here to the preview in, on your canvas and design space, which is something I recommend when you're pressing your layers to remind yourself of what is on the bottom, etc. You can see the layers here in the layers panel. So for example, here we have the bottom blue faux leather layer, then the window layer, the red layer for the bird, etc. And then you'll just keep applying those layers. So lots of options for you to keep track while you're making this project. Let's click the make it button and we're cutting the materials on a mat. And the first thing we want to do is go through each mat and click on the mirror toggle because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. If you're using permanent vinyl for this project, 
then you would not mirror the vinyl mats, you would only mirror the faux leather mat. So I like to cut the faux leather mat first. And what I want to do, as I mentioned, I want to cut the front faux leather piece from the pretty snowflake print and I'll cut the back from white. So because these are in reverse, this one with the tail here, this is the back layer because when it cuts, it will be mirrored. And then this one is the front layer. So I'm gonna move the front layer over to the side, the back layer over here. If this is too confusing, just cut both of them from the exact same color faux leather, or you could do a test run with a piece of cardstock and make sure that you know which shape is the front and which shape is the back. So I've separated the front and the back pieces of faux leather, and what I'll end up doing is cutting a piece of faux leather to a size just slightly larger than the shape, so about four inches wide and six inches tall, and we'll tape those down on our mat to cut. Then what I want to do is click on all of the other vinyl mats, and I want to just drag the shapes apart from each other a little bit and away from the edges. This one on the white layer, it's important to note you have the window frame and you also have a small white circle. So make sure you separate those shapes so you have enough space to trim them apart from each other before you press them. So now that I've arranged all of my mats, I'm going to click back on the faux leather mat and I'll click continue. The material setting we'll use is called faux leather paper thin. And if you don't have it bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search for and find this setting. So we'll click on that to select it, and we're always going to choose more pressure when we're cutting faux leather. Then when we return to Design Space to cut out all of the vinyl layers, you will use the material setting that corresponds to the material you're using. You might be using regular heat transfer vinyl or glitter or foil iron-on or something else. So you will use those cut settings. I can tell you for my vinyl layers, I will be using the vinyl setting with default pressure. And for the mats that I will be cutting from glitter heat transfer vinyl, I will use the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure. And because I'm using Caesar heat transfer vinyl glitter, which is a little on the thick side, I will repeat the cut one time. But let's hop back over here to our faux leather mat. Make sure we have that set up correctly. And now let's go back to my overhead camera and we'll start to cut out all of our mats and then I'll show you how to put the ornament together. So I've already trimmed out a piece of faux leather to the size that I noted in the mat preview screen earlier. I have one for the front of my ornament and then I have white for the back. And I'm going to place these on my mat. Remember one is the front, one is the back and these cut in reverse. So if you wanna do a test with cardstock before you cut these two shapes out, I think that's a great idea. But my front is here and my back is here. So I'm gonna place these down, press all over with my hands, and then I'm going to use some blue painter's tape to tape all around both shapes. And this is gonna help keep our material really firmly stuck to our purple strong grit mat. And this is gonna help us get great cuts. If you're not used to using blue painter's tape, I know it's a little more expensive than something like masking tape, but you can peel off the pieces after you cut and reuse them, I would say four or five times before they start to get to where they aren't sticky anymore. So my mat is all taped up. We have the material setting of faux leather paper thin with more pressure all ready to go. So we'll just load the mat into the machine and begin the cut. So the mat has cut. Before we unload the mat, we wanna use something like a sharp weeding tool to check and see if the cut went all the way through. And you can see I'm just lifting up the edge of the cut. If your cut does not lift up cleanly like that, just rerun the cut and you can do that as many times as necessary as long as you don't unload your mat. So to rerun the cut on the Maker and the Explore machines, you just press that cut button again. And if you're using the Cricut Joy, the option to rerun the cut will be on your screen in Design Space but these look pretty good. So we'll go ahead and unload the mat. Remember there's a little pre-cut ornament hole at the top that we'll wanna pop out. And we'll just confirm that we cut these correctly. This is the front, this is the back, because the cardinal tail comes this way and its head is here. So 
That looks great. You could use your little curved scissors if necessary and just trim up any fuzzies on the edges, but these layers look pretty good. So now I'm going to return to Design Space. I'm gonna cut out my vinyl layers. So I'm using some regular white heat transfer vinyl, a little bit of black, some solid red, and then I'm using some, this is a burgundy glitter heat transfer vinyl. I'm gonna cut the wing from this. So I'll go ahead and cut out all of the vinyl layers. I'll weed away the excess vinyl, and then I'll show you how to press the ornament together. So I've cut and weeded all the vinyl layers. I have my Easy Press Mini warmed up on the low setting. That's that bottom green line. Again, if you're using a regular Easy Press, set it to 265 degrees, and then you can always go up in temperature as needed. So we have our four layers, and I just wanted to point out two things before we start. So on the white layer for the window frame, we do have the little eye of the cardinal that I just sort of moved off to the side, and I'm going to cut that out because we will apply that later. And then for the black layer, I know this looks strange, but it has the bird legs and it has a little detail right near the cardinal's beak. These two shapes I put together for you and I grouped them, so don't cut those apart. Leave them where they are and then you'll end up with the little beak shape and the feet in the perfect place. Okay, so we are going to start with our little faux leather base layer here and then we're going to press the window. So the easiest way to do this is to line up that pre-cut hole in the window with the pre-cut hole in your faux leather shape. And then just make sure that you have a nice even border of the faux leather showing around on all sides. So see how there's a nice even border of just that little peak of the faux leather and our hole is lined up so we know this is in the right place. So we'll cover with our little cover sheet Remember, you could use butcher paper or parchment paper. I'm going to press all over for 10 seconds. I need to make sure that every single spot of this heat transfer vinyl gets some heat, at least 10 seconds. And then we will peel away our cover sheet and see how we did. Okay, so we've pressed all over and now I'm going to keep my faux leather layer flat and just very slowly peel away this clear carrier sheet. If when you're peeling your vinyl starts to lift, just gently place this right back down, cover and press some more. But this looks pretty good. There we go. And you can see the little snowflakes in the window. Remember if you use the light blue faux leather with the snowflakes, then it would be a daytime scene. So now we're going to press our cardinal layer and I'm basically going to use that tail shape. I'm gonna place it so that we have that same even border around the tail. See that little border? And then when you do that, the cardinal will just pop into the right position. We'll cover and we'll press. So again, we'll peel away the carrier sheet very slowly. There we go. So now we're going to apply the black layer with the beak and the feet. And I'm gonna place this on and then I'll bring it up so I can show you. So what we're doing is we're using this outer edge of this black layer and we're lining it up with the outer edge of the beak of underneath the beak and right above the beak. Do you see that? That little black edge is touching the end and so is this one. And when you put those two places in position, the little black line here will be in line with the beak cut line. And then the feet will pop into position once you have this right. There we go. And now there's a little black circle and that's where we're gonna put the eye circle. Just like that. There we go. And then the last layer is going to be the wing layer. And we're going to match up this back shape 
we're going to match up the back shape of the wing with the back outline of the red layer. And there we go. So this is warm. I'm gonna place it underneath my heat pressing pad for about 60 seconds to let it cool flat. And then we'll get ready to glue. So I mentioned that I have a trick for helping us get this glued ornament nice and flat with a pretty edge. And that trick is using a heavy book after we glue. So I have my front of my ornament and my back. I'm gonna flip them both over. Using that fabric glue, you're going to apply glue all over the back of one side of the ornament. I like to do the back layer so that I can pick up and place the front layer that we've already decorated. You wanna get the glue pretty close to the edge but not all the way to the edge because when we press this ornament underneath our heavy book, the glue will seep a little bit to the edges, which is exactly what we want. And don't worry if you get some glue that comes out of the edges, you'll be able to wipe it up with your finger or you'll be able to wipe it up with a little damp paper towel. So we've got glue on one side. We'll pick up the front side, just place it down, and you'll wanna take just a moment to get those edges very neatly lined up from the front to the back so we don't see the back layer on the front layer. Just kind of press all over with your fingers. Make sure the hole lines up neatly, the tail lines up. And I think that looks pretty good. So we're just gonna take this, put it on your work surface, heavy book, and let this sit for about an hour. Now I recommend checking in about five minutes just for any glue seepage so you can wipe that up quickly before the glue starts to harden. It'll wipe away cleanly if you check in about five minutes. Remember a finger or a damp paper towel and you're good to go. Then when this dries, I'm gonna show you quickly how to tie on a little ribbon and finish off the ornament. So our ornament has had some time to dry, so let's take a look. Oh, and that looks really good. So you can see the white edges of the faux leather here, and if that bothers you, you can use a color coordinated Sharpie marker. I'll probably look for a navy, so I won't show you how to do this now, but you would just basically carefully, without getting ink on the front of the design, rub the Sharpie sideways all along the edges, and that'll color it blue. Now on this one, it's not that big of a deal because the back is white, so it kind of makes sense. But if you had a color on the back and a color on the front with a white edge, then you might want to color it. So try not to do it up in the air like I am because the marker might slip and make a mark on the front. So what I like to do is put a couple pieces of scrap paper down on my surface, put it down and then color along on the edges. Okay, so we'll skip that step for now, but I wanted to mention it. And then to attach the little hanger, you could just cut a piece of ribbon this is three eighths inch ribbon. I've done this also with one eighth inch ribbon, so it really is up to you, whatever ribbon size you'd like to use. But I'm going to tie a little bow and then make my loop. You could just cut this and tie a little loop and that's it. But you know, again, I just wanna show you some options. So here's a piece of ribbon. This is probably 20 to 22 inches. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to fold it in half, make my loop at the top. So imagine this will be the hanger, and then these two loops will come through to the front and we'll tie a little bow. And it'll just add a little bit of decoration to the front. So there's my bow, this, my little loop. This is about four inches. Just gonna place it down and then tie a regular knot and that will be the center of my bow. There we go, and then little loop, little loop, little bow, and I feel like that just kind of dresses up the top a little bit. I'll use my little scissors, trim up those edges,
And that's it. Our cardinal ornament is complete. I hope you enjoyed this project. And if you want to see all of the faux leather crafts I've created for this holiday faux leather crafting event, I'll leave a link to a playlist for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.